Welcome back. Our final stop on today's show is also the final resting place of many of Habersham County's earliest residents and community members. The old Clarksville Cemetery dates back even before Clarksville was incorporated as a city. A cultural landmark and a vital part of our history, the cemetery is a tangible link to Habersham's iconic stewards such as Jarvis Van Buren and Frederick Derbeck. Recently, the cemetery has undergone some major renovations thanks to the generous contributions of local residents who have committed to bringing new life to nearly 200 years of history. Okay, I'm here with Brooks Garcia. Brooks is with the Historic Clarksville Cemetery Preservation Group, which is a nonprofit group that is working to restore and preserve this beautiful cemetery. So thanks for being on the show today. Glad to be here, Mary Beth. And tell us first, where, where are we? We're in downtown Clarksville, but where, whereabouts we're, are we're a couple of We're a couple of blocks off of Washington Street, which is the main street, and actually Jefferson is here, okay. and Wayne, Wayne Street, and it is um, truly a gem in downtown Clarksville. It's, it's amazing to see what's been done here, and I know we're going to talk about it, but first let's talk about this group that's been put together. There's a board of directors yes. established to uh, work with the cemetery. So who all is on the board? What types of folks do you have? Um, Barry Acock, the mayor of Clarksville, okay. um, myself, and I come with um, six years of experience having worked at Historic Oakland Cemetery and two terms on the board there. Mm -hmm and also 30 years of gardening experience. So I'm in charge of sort of restoring the grounds here. We have Polly Earl, who is in charge of restoration mm -hmm. and she does all the work on the headstones. And she's done some work on some local cemeteries as well. Lane Gresham, who's the recording secretary, secretary also mm -hmm. photographer. Um, Diane Brown, who is a real estate agent. And then um, Virginia Gorday, who is doing all our genealogical work. Okay. And Doug Henry, who's a lawyer in case one of our residents wants to file a uh, wrongful death suit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good group of really good people. Um, so you guys got started sort of with, what was your mission? To preserve, restore, and share this unbelievable cultural landmark with the people of this community because this is where the forefathers, the people who founded Clarksville and who started this community are buried. This is their final resting place and they all have a story, which are very interesting, many of them. So preserving this cemetery is, is important for so many, many reasons. And I wanted you to really talk about like what it means to the community, what it means for economic development, what it means just to, to this, the history of our area in general. It is our history. It's mm -hmm. where we came from. And so by restoring that, it becomes a landmark and a tourist attraction. Mm -hmm. And that attracts more businesses and more money and economic development and so forth. And also it brings us a lot of attention. Yeah. We get unbelievable amounts of hits and shares on Facebook and Instagram. I want to talk too about the before. When you guys first came on, when this property was, uh, I guess it was in, in the hands of a private group and then the city of Clarksville acquired the property. Yes. The state of the cemetery was? Well, it, I when I got here, it wasn't too bad. Yeah. The previous friends group did an enormous amount of work just cleaning up the cemetery. Mm -hmm. The two words we were using was abandoned and neglected yeah. so badly that you couldn't even see the headstones. Many of them were were tumped over, were broken and in disrepair. They had aged so much that you couldn't read the headstones and the epitaphs and the dates and the names. And so that's what we've been doing. We've sort of beat the brush back, cleaned it up, gotten the debris out of here, and then we started on the restoration of cleaning the headstones, gluing some of them back together and getting them upright. And through this process, you've been able to identify some pretty significant folks uh, that have here. What's Give us an interesting story. Well, there's Calvin Hanks, which was a law young lawyer who was ambushed on the streets of Clarksville. Wow. He's our first burial in 1834. He was stabbed to death and he has a very haunting epitaph. His grave is right here. We're right, we're right in front of it. Right front and of you've, got, you've got it memorized, so go ahead. I do. Uh, his epitaph reads, ye living men as you walk by, as you are now, so was I, as I am now, you must be. Prepare for death and follow me. Uh, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of creepy. So, okay, we're going to we're going to come back in just a minute and we're going to talk with a resident who's also on your board who lives right around here and has has been um, helpful as far as the fundraising aspect goes. So, we'll be right back. Stay with us. More talk coming up on today's Chamber Chat. We'll be right back with Mary Beth and her guest. <laughs>
Okay, we're standing in front of the gravesite of Jarvis Van Buren and his wife, Eliza. Who was Jarvis Van Buren? He was a very notable resident here in Clarksville. Uh, many may know that he designed Grace Calvary Episcopal Church, but he also designed the house that Diane Brown lives in, which is Gloaming Cottage. And this is Diane yes. Brown, and Hello. you're in Jarvis's house. Yes, I am. It's he, a beautiful home. Yeah. It's, um, it's a special home. Uh, he built it uh, or started construction and completed in 1840. Uh, he had had to come off of construction of Grace Calvary because of a drought and he had a sawmill down on the Sequoia River. Wow. So that was delayed a bit. But um, there's windows in the house that match those of Crescent Hill Methodist Church over in Saltee Valley that oh, wow. he constructed. Okay. So they were, supposedly they were throughout the house, but now they're only on one end. And the house, your home, his home, is right here at the corner yes. across the street from the cemetery. So you've yeah. literally lived with the cemetery as your front yard. Exactly. So you have a very vested interest in right. the preservation of this. And I understand you're very instrumental in the fundraising aspect of it. So what all has been done? How do you preserve a cemetery? How do you get the money? How do you get the community involved? Um, I think the community becomes involved once they see that there's a group that really has a fire in the belly, so mm -hmm. to speak, yeah. for the everything to be preserved and for the memory of these people that were really the the very begin original Clarksvillians. Yeah and to preserve that heritage is so, so important. Um, a couple of things coming up this month, the mm -hmm. month of May, um, I know the Chamber's doing a ribbon cutting mm -hmm. to celebrate right. all of the work that you've right. done and really just kind of get the community here and, and mm -hmm. educated about what is going on and, and get them interested. Mm -hmm. But you also have another big event, a fundraiser coming up yes. uh, in uh, this month as well. Tell right, us a it's about uh, that. May 19th, I think, it's Mount Laurel. Mm -hmm. 18th, but 18th, 18th yep. okay, but that evening at 6.30, we'll be at Grace Calvary, okay. uh, have it and bring your picnic, we'll sit on the lawn, we'll listen to great music, then we'll hear some information about the cemetery, okay. about um, Van Buren, mm -hmm. about some other folks that are buried here. Okay. And I think it's going to be a great evening. And, and it's I encourage gloaming supper. Mm -hmm. And gloaming means twilight. So that's perfect. So yeah, the timing so it's perfect. twilight, yes. So it sort of is going to be like a Chastain Park mm -hmm. in the graveyard. That's right. So yes. you can bring your table, chairs, your candelabras, okay. your blanket, whatever you want. How do people get tickets? And how much are tickets? Tickets are, help me, 25, 25 of individual and okay. 40, 40 a couple. A couple. Okay. They be, can, can be purchased online or at City Hall yeah. or from one of the board members yep. if okay. you see us around town. That's going to be a really cool event. I think it's going to be great. Yeah. We have a special surprise oh, at the we end. Do. Oh, wow. Okay, well, there about. you go. There's yeah. your there's your teaser. So I can't um, wait because uh, I get chills every time I think about oh, it. Oh, really? Yeah, I do. Oh, gosh. So, so you yeah. got to come just for the ending Absolutely. for sure. Absolutely. Okay, so people watching who want to get involved, how can people help? Um, of course, we'll take your donations mm -hmm. because it only takes two things, time and money. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, we got lots of time. We need lots of money. Mm -hmm. um, we've got lots of other things planned, and I'm not going to tell you what they are because mm -hmm. we've not firmed them up, right. but okay. we're going to be known for having the events not to be mm -hmm. missed. So, I love it. Yeah. Fun, fun events. Fun, fun events fun that events. are interesting and engaging. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us yep. on Instagram. Yep. Um, donate. Talk. Okay. Just, just be drive just, by just here. be yeah. active and come yeah. and see what we've done and be yeah. engaged. I love it. Congratulations to you guys for a job well done. Thank you for being part of the show. And um, again, everybody come out and check this out. It's absolutely amazing. It's actually it's very peaceful here. Um, it's it's really, really neat. And that's all for this edition of Chamber Chat. If you want your business feature, give us a call at 706-778-4654 and we'll see you next month.